One of the key foundations of the Pokemon series is the ability for us to trade Pokemon with one another. It allows us to take our own personal adventures we've had with these games and share them with someone else, since every Pokemon tells a story. And to me, there's no better way to get a glimpse into hundreds, if not thousands, of other people's adventures than wonder trading. A random matchmaking system where you select a Pokemon to trade out and randomly receive another Pokemon in return from someone else. Last year, I took on the ambitious goal of obtaining all 721 Pokemon in the National Decks in Pokemon Y by utilizing only Wonder Trade. It was an awesome way to see a community work together to accomplish something, and it wasn't long before I wanted to do something like this again. So in November of 2021, when Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl released, and I had heard that the old GTS building in Jubilife had set things to Wumbo and became the GWS with Wonder Trades, I knew that it was time to set out and do it again. I wanted to do it on a smaller scale this time, and started with the small goal of simply obtaining all 151 Pokémon in the Sinnoh Regional Decks, so I could unlock the Poké Radar in the National Decks early. But, as you will soon see, my goals would spiral just a little bit out of control and become far more ambitious than I could have ever imagined. My name is Matt, but you can call me Absol, and this is my second Wonder Trade Gauntlet. I hope you enjoy. Our hero set out on his Shining Pearl journey on December 23rd, 2021, versus a formidable rival named Updates. Full name, Nintendo Switch Software Updates. Because prep for this was not going to be easy without a couple proper updates to the game. The first and arguably most critical update I was awaiting was access to the GWS itself, which was blocked off to the player at launch which kept me wondering how Wonder Trade would even work in this game. So I kind of had to wing it with my early preparations and hope that the setup that I was doing was close enough to being what I needed. And my setup would be the same as I did last time on the 3DS, filling up all my boxes with Fiona to Wonder Trade out, because receiving a mythical Pokémon is a little bit cooler than a Starly or Shinx. Ideally, I wanted to do this as early in the game as possible, but that leads me to the second update that was making preparing for this a little bit more difficult. The game was not yet compatible with Pokémon Home, meaning I couldn't simply transfer in boxes upon boxes of hatched Pokémon from another file like I did last time, and instead I would have to play up past the first two badges so I could hatch them myself. Very conveniently, there was a Manaphy Wi-Fi event going on, so obtaining the Manaphy that I would need to make these Fiona was no issue, and neither was the gameplay leading up to this point by any means whatsoever. In order to get Fiona eggs, you need a ditto, so I caught a little horse and traded it with another file. Then I traded my starter Turtwig for a Pokémon with Flame Body or Magma Armor to speed up the egg hatching process. And then I started hatching Fiona eggs. And then over the course of three months, I only hatched like two boxes because I was playing Legends Arceus. But maybe this procrastination worked out in my favor, because in March, when the 1.3.0 update dropped, many of my plans would be shaken up with a sudden thud. I'm getting a bad feeling right now. That night, the 1.3.0 update dropped, that added the GWS and Wonder Trading, and I would learn that what I wanted to do may not be entirely possible the way that I imagined it. Well, I just learned something that puts a wrench in my current plans. You can't trade this Pokémon in Wonder Trade because this Pokémon is special. Can you even trade Legendaries? You can't even trade Legendaries. Because the game does not allow you to wonder trade legendaries or mythicals, my boxes of Fiona were created for nothing. And instead of being able to obtain the entire Sinnoh Dex through Wonder Trade like I had once envisioned, it would be the Sinnoh Dex minus legendaries. And the National Dex would take an even bigger beating from this. But I didn't want to abandon the project. And on the brighter side of things, the big globe, known as the Geonet in the original games, can now give us rare candies which gives us the opportunity to train a Pokémon to level 100. I'm not going to make y'all sit through this entire intro this deep into the video. So yeah, there's a whole level 100 gauntlet aspect to this too. Now that it's out, let's walk through the process of how the GWS works. So you go to the GWS building in Jubilife, select a Pokémon to trade, and then you're presented with the globe and the option to choose from one of 630 points to create a trade from. You can select any point you want, doesn't have to be where you live, and it won't have any sort of effect on who you wonder trade with. 
Once you start the trade, the globe will then take you to another point someone else selected, and you'll receive a Pokémon from there. And if it's your first time receiving something from that point, that point will be marked on your personal globe. Each of the 630 points on the globe stores up to five different memories of trades you've done, and the more points on the globe that you've registered, the more rare candies you'll get as a reward. Capping out at a total of 670 rare candies after you've traded with every individual point on the globe. So upon seeing that registering all 630 points on the entire globe nets you enough rare candies to train six Pokémon to level 100, I knew I had to do it. And since I had already set my sights that high, I might as well scale up the Dex goal too. From the Sinnoh Dex, all the way up to the National Dex. Minus Legendaries, because you can't Wonder Trade those. And so I went back to hatching eggs, this time of a Pokémon that I was actually allowed to Wonder Trade. My favorite Pokémon, Absol. Today's March 27th. I have two boxes of Absol right now, but even with just these two, we might start things off tonight. Because tonight I'm about to do a charity stream for Gamers Outreach. And if we hit our donation goal of $500, I will start this Wonder Trade gauntlet tonight. So let's see if that happens. And then I started the charity stream, which was just a normal shiny hunting stream where donating would let you add pictures to the layout or play song requests. Dink my oiter. Only 20 minutes after starting, it was locked in that I was going to do a Wonder Trade stream that night. Fire Piplup with the $20, we've surpassed the goal! Alright, uh, we're gonna do a Wonder Trade stream tonight now. And then I had to make up new goals. Like getting mad at $800. And Cloudfin Raptor with $500 for the kids. Cloudfin Raptor! How dare you donate $500 to charity! How dare you! Or talking in a country accent and trying a grilled cheese sandwich for the first time at $1,500. We just hit the $1,500 goal, by the way. Southern Matt, which Mountain Dew flavor do I dislike the most? Uh, probably the gingerbread snapped, I reckon. And finally, walking to Burger King and doing wonder trades there over the course of this gauntlet at $2,000, as well as trying the beverage Ski, which Twitch user Ski Master Nathan had been patronizing me about for every single stream for about five months. With this goal not quite yet reached, I started the wonder trade stream. We're in the GWS. The GWS. And using the chatbot I created last year so everyone in the chat could time their trade at the same time as me, we initiated the first trade. This stream was a bit of a test run, and I hadn't yet formulated my strategy on how I was going to trade with every point, so I just traded out all these Absol from my home point, point .477. Let's see how this works. The first wonder trade. We're going to point .69, nice! <laughs> Matt play MH? <laughs> okay, Justin, alright. <laughs> Oh, we got a Lantern, that's a cool one. Oh, that was Han! It only took four trades to realize that something fishy was going on. And I don't mean the fact that the first four trades were all water type. When I received this Lantern from Karma, aka Han, I learned that they did not receive my Absol in return and instead got a Combi from someone else. You got a Combi? Meaning these Wonder Trades aren't synchronous one-to-one -one trades with another person, like the trade animation in-game suggests that it is. It's as if your Pokémon goes out into a massive pool of Pokémon, and you randomly get someone else's Pokémon in return. This resulted in some interesting situations where people would receive Pokémon that were traded out multiple trades ago, and some people in my chat allegedly even traded with themselves. I personally did not see this happen, but I take their word for it, since I heard about it from multiple different people. It was really weird not knowing who exactly my Absol was actually going to, but at the end of the day, all that really mattered was that I was getting Pokémon from people in chat. There's a shiny Houndoom, hello! I thought it would be a lot harder for me to trade with chat because it was the most recent game, but apparently that wasn't the case. Bofa! <laughs> and all things considered, the variety of Pokémon that I was getting was way better than I thought it would be, with all sorts of interesting post-game Pokémon, and very few duplicates. And I received my first Spinda, which will be an interesting subject for later. Surprisingly, it took me 43 trades to get my first Starly, which is what I thought would be the most common Pokémon I would receive over the course of this. And I don't think it was necessarily because I was trading with my chat, because I had given very little early warning about me doing this. Wonder Trade was just genuinely pretty awesome within the first weeks of it being out in this game. But what's even more awesome is that we raised the $2,000 for charity, and soon, I would walk to Burger King 
and do wonder trades there. At the end of the first night, I did 67 trades and I registered 41 out of 630 points on the map. It was then time for me to hatch more Absol and prepare for the next stream. And thanks to the power of Anime Night on March 30th, after 152 eggs I hatched a very strange looking Absol. I was using the Masuda method so I had a decent chance of hatching a shiny Absol, but I didn't expect for it to happen so soon. I decided I would keep this one rather than trading it, but I would trade out any future shinies I would find. Once I had a few more boxes of Absol to trade out, on April 2nd I set up my Pokedex tracker and learned that I had 50 Pokemon in the National deck so far. Then, I decided to stream to increase that number even more. And it was during this stream that I figured out my strategy for taking on the globe. The key to registering every point is just to focus on each individual point one at a time. The idea is to sequentially work your way down the entire list of 630 points, trading at each individual point until you receive something from it. And this is a good strategy whether you have a Twitch chat to help you out or not. Because once you complete a trade, the game defaults to the last point that you received something from when you decide to start your next trade. Meaning that if you keep trading from the same point over and over again, even random strangers might end up trading from the point that you need. So in the bot command for the timer, I added the number for what point that I'm trading from, making coordinating this very easy. And I slowly began to conquer the globe, and the best possible prize for world domination is rare candies. But maybe I was taking my conquest too far, because it looked like a hero that was me from another universe with Bibarel as my favorite Pokemon was sent to stop me. Bibarel blogs. Bibarel blogs Roblox. But I was a force that couldn't be stopped. Couldn't be stopped from getting to 97 Pokemon in the Pokedex. And registering the first 40 points, bringing me to a grand total of 94 points so far on the map. That is until a certain Meowth came along. Raising Cane! Getting this Meowth named Raising Cane made me really hungry. Shout out to Meowth. So I stopped streaming and I went and got food and I really enjoyed it. But I hate how easily influenced I was just by a Pokemon's nickname. I wasn't gonna let this cat hinder my progress though and I kept hatching eggs over the course of the next few days. On April 4th, I hatched my second shiny Absol, and on April 5th, I got something important in the mail. What ski? The ski taste test would have to wait until Ski Master Nathan appeared in chat, though. Lickitung? A hundred points! The games were still in a very unique state where they were cut off completely from Pokemon Home, meaning nothing could be transferred in and everything I received had to have been caught within these games, making shiny trades very rare and feel all the more special when I got one. That's a shiny Pidgey, I'm pretty sure. That's gotta be shiny. CHICKEN! From ah! Eventually, the Ski Master arrived. Nathan! I've been waiting for your arrival today. I've prepared a layout for this moment. I have Ski. I have bested the Ski Master. Well, actually, no, the Ski Master has bested me, and I totally gave in. That's pretty good. I like it. Then chat wanted me to try Skilk, which is Ski mixed with milk, and I don't think I'm gonna give in to that one. I just kept wonder trading. Stupid. Also during the night, I traded out the shiny Absol that I had hatched the day before. And I really hope the person who got it, who is not the person who sent me this Cherubi, most likely, really enjoys it. I ended the night with 139 points on the globe, and with 143 in the decks. On the weekend of April 8th, I drove over to Texas to have a shiny hunting IRL with my friend Mr. Let's Play It. And I took every opportunity I could to also hatch some more Absol while I was here. I'm a firm believer that whenever I take on a grindy project like this, I need a change of scenery every now and then, just to keep things fresh. And the boxes of Absol that I hatched in Texas this weekend were pretty much effortless. Until we hit an unfortunate obstacle. 
a tree that required HM01 cut in order for us to get past it, and neither of us had the HM. So I had to drive back home to Louisiana. On April 12th, I did another Wonder Trade stream, where I got traded a diseased Spinda, which would become a disease on my file in another way later that I'll talk about. At this point, I silently started to wonder what would be the last Pokémon I would receive from this. In a pre-Pokémon homeworld, I thought it would be one of the most difficult friendship evolutions, Lopunny, or the double trade evolution, Porygon Z. Stand up? Why are you telling me to stand up? Why am, why am I standing? But as I continued to receive rare Pokémon like Lucario, I wasn't really sure. But after 411 trades, I completed my first little goal of this. Getting enough rare candies for a Pokémon to reach level 100. 200 points! It would still be a while before I actually used them, though. We have 108 rare candies. I still had to register 430 more points on the globe, so five more Pokémon could reach the pinnacle of power. I also thought for the first time I received one of my Absol back, but it turned out to be one of the children of my Absol from someone named Z-Mint. Sasuke! Now that's very cool, that's tentacool. At the end of the night, with 217 points on the globe and 190 Pokémon in my decks, I prepared to set out on a journey later that week. A journey inspired by a meme, and by a song that Green Day would eventually go on to cover. Last year I used that song, but I figured I'd change things up this year, and use something a little bit different. I apologize in advance for what you're about to hear. When I woke up, yes I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who walks to Burger King. When I walk home, yes I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who walks from Burger King. When I walk up, yes I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who walks to Burger King. This year the lobby was open, and I was able to connect to Wi-Fi. I didn't stream it, but I told the world I was ready and I started doing wonder trades at Burger King. And I would walk to Burger King, and I would walk back home again, just to be the man who walked to Burger King to wonder trade, my friends, when I walk home. The most notable thing that happened with these Burger King trades is that I got my own Absol, named Bike, back the next trade after I sent it out from someone else. This was the only time this happened during the entire gauntlet, which is ironic because my actual bike would get stolen two months later. And I would walk back home again Just to be the man who walked to Burger King To wonder trade my friends H in chat? I'll, I'll type H. I did 21 wonder trades at Burger King, and when I walked back home from Burger King, I did even more, and got my first trade evolution. I also got a bit nostalgic and whipped out the old 3DS to do some 3DS wonder trades alongside the brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, back when you could set custom status messages with your trades and the trades were actually one-to-one -one with another person. Even though things have changed, I'm happy that wonder trade is still around. $8! I'm rich! I'm rich! After getting these $8, I'm quitting my job and I'm doing this full-time. Some of the coolest trades I got that day were on my 3DS. One of the Pokémon that I was especially happy to get during this stream was this... Normal Ralts. It was a pretty wonderful day, and I only ended because I had finally run out of the eggs that I hatched in Texas. So I had to start hatching once again. April 20th... Shiny Absol, number 3. I had one more duty I was contractually bound to doing from the charity stream. Making and trying a grilled cheese sandwich for the first time. And it was pretty good. Lamp oil! Rope! Bombs? Your mom? 300 points! 40 more rare candies. Well, there we go, 707 trades. Over the next few days while I was hatching, I had all sorts of interesting encounters. First, I got an interesting package from my friend Zach, who appeared in some older videos. I got all sorts of interesting cards, like these playing cards based off the Pokémon anime, with a lot of art that just reeks of the early 2000s. 
I also got some other Japanese cards, like this Imposter Professor Oak, which was sleeved up by Kaiba Corp. For all we know, the real Imposter Professor Oak could be trapped within this card for this reason. Zubathu. And this mini CRT monitor that I'm going to have to hunt a shiny on someday. I also saw a legendary Window Frog, a shiny Absol in the underground, Shiny Absol! What? 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 The disappearance of Window Frog, and some big roseate spoonbills. Over the course of this, I hatched about five boxes of Absol, and I was ready to do more trades. Yes! I did it! Is that Chungu Sr.? The esteemed gentleman? Yes! Chungu Sr.! Even without the Pokemon Home update, I was still making some amazing progress. But because we were still without that update, my PC boxes were filling up, and I had a finite amount of storage. Because I didn't want to retrade anything that I had previously gotten before, once I had traded out my 40th box of Absol, there would be a hard stop to this, until that update would release, and we honestly had no idea when that would happen. So I decided that as I was hatching my last few boxes of Absol before reaching this stopping point, I would try and capture some rare Pokémon on another save file to try and wonder trade them with myself, so I could focus on quality with these last few pre-home trades. Starting with Poké-Radar chaining for a shiny Beldum which would be the ultimate shiny reclaim of my first shiny fail on YouTube. No. Shiny patch? Oh, the run back! The run back on when I was a kid! That was a low chain. And I did get the reclaim, but my plan to trade with myself wouldn't work because both my systems were using the same Nintendo Switch Online account. Look behind. And this session on April 29th would have one of the craziest trades of the entire gauntlet. Upon sending out an Absol named Window Frog, I received another Window Frog in return. What? I traded out Window Frog and got Window Frog in return! How does that work? <laughs> I can't escape the window frog. I just, I had to check my window, it's not there. Despite not being able to trade with myself, I still made tremendous dex progress. With lots of trade evolutions, which were basically like getting two Pokemon in one trade. On a rainy first day of May, I did my final stream before Pokemon Home dropped. And I received another shipment of Ski from the Ski Master. Chungus Jr. Four hundred points. Crazy. Although I still had a few more Absol I could trade, this is where I stopped before Pokemon Home released. And I made pretty significant progress, all things considered. 291 in the decks is not bad, with many difficult to obtain Pokemon already crossed off. At this point, it was a waiting game, waiting for Pokemon Home to happen. But I wasn't going to just sit idly by. I could prepare on other games. Starting by trying to get more shiny Absol by Pokeradar chaining in the original Diamond and Pearl. Despite it being my favorite Pokemon, I never chained it back when I was really, really into this. And Pokeradar chaining is, if you ask me, the best way of obtaining shinies in bulk to trade out. Oh, there's the shiny patch. That looks pretty neat. There's another. Number two, baby. I wanted to farm more than just a couple of these things, but unfortunately I made a little misstep and my chain ended. Oh, that wasn't a shiny patch. That, that was a wing gold patch. But these Absol weren't the only things that I was going to prepare. With the shiny hunting event that I host called Safari Week coming up, I wanted to help people hunt rare grass-type targets in the Great Marsh. So I wanted to gather a lot of Execute with the hidden ability Harvest. I figured the easiest way to do this would be through the Gen 1 and 2 Virtual Console games on the 3DS, since all Pokémon transferred up from those games are guaranteed to have their hidden abilities. But catching all these Execute proved to be a little bit slower than I thought. 
So I took things to Alola, because I missed hatching eggs there and running around in circles on my Tauros. Ultra sun. And an ultra moon. And out of real life, Jurassic Safari Zone, I hatched more of these execute for Safari Week. And these execute will be what I would hatch for the next month. But thankfully, I wouldn't have to wait that long for the Pokemon Home update to drop. On May 18th. And while I was moving my current collection of Pokemon into Pokemon Home, I immediately noticed something kind of weird. Involving Spinda, which I was talking about earlier. Spinda cannot be transferred in or out of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Because there's a glitch on how its spot patterns are displayed, which would make it inconsistent between this game and home. So instead of patching Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, as it currently stands, you just can't take it in or out of the game. So I had to create a box for these little guys called Spinda Jail, where they may indefinitely remain unless Ilka comes through and actually patches the game someday. With the Spinda incarcerated and many eggs in Absol, on June 3rd, I finally did my first post Pokemon Home Wonder Trade stream. It's like we had stepped into the future and things were a little bit strange. Like the strange balls that Pokemon from Legends Arceus come in. Jimmy John! With only three out of the first 900 trades being shiny Pokemon, there was immediately a much higher concentration of shinies being sent out. We had clearly left the microcosm of the Chibi Sinnoh region, and the Pokemon I was receiving could have come from anywhere now. And the possibilities for what could happen were endless. Get souped! Oh, I just got souped. I can't come back from that. I guess stream's over. I just got souped. In all seriousness, though, it was really fascinating that it took me over a thousand trades to get my first Zigzagoon, which was one of the most common Pokemon during my Pokemon Y Wonder Trade gauntlet. Just goes to show how different things were with this game before the home compatibility. After a very productive first stream back after Pokemon Home, I went out and did a brief intermission of GoFest, which was not as exciting as I thought it would be. So I chased some excitement later that day with more Wonder Trades. Though we had stepped into the future, many things remained the same. Like Matt sending out Pokemon named Matt. And also during this time, I received my first Dunsparce after over a thousand trades. Take note of how late I received my first one, because this will be an interesting statistic later. At the end of the day, I had less than 200 points on the globe to go, and we were eerily close to getting a vertical bingo on the dex tracker. Due to a prior commitment on June 9th, I was not able to make any wonder trades, so I sent out a special guest to be my substitute. The Warden of the Safari Zone, Calzone. It's me, Calzone. Do we like Strombolis? Do not say the word Stromboli, that is a bannable offense, JP. And that's a shiny graveler. I'm a Calzone purist. There's a pseudo wudo, fake wood, fake tree, real mustache, 100% real mustache, and don't argue with me on it, it's real. Just dance. I feel really bad for the confused people who tuned into this stream for the first time that night. Oh, 450 points! Hot dog! Basketball. Dribble that around. Bingo! <laughs> Bingo. We've entered the bingo zone. Its name was Bingo, too. <laughs> Oddish are friends, not food. Pondering my orb. My ard. My odd. Pondering my Oddish. There's a Lopany. Word has it, that was the Pokemon that Matt predicted would be the last one he gets over the course of this. Don't you dare eat Oddish in a salad. Do you realize who's listening right now? This is an Oddish. Oh! Yeah, Fieldland! Thanks to Calzone's magical touch, I got the most shinies that I would get in a single night during this entire gauntlet. This is Calzone, signing off. I'll see y'all during Safari Week. Once your YouTube channel reaches a certain size, there's a not often talked about fact that the Tier List Council carefully reviews your channel every year to make sure you've made at least one Tier List video. Otherwise, they permanently delete your channel. So in order to meet this quota, I once again did wonder trades on the national holiday known as Tier List Tuesday. Most of these tier lists were suggested by chat, like ranking pictures of me and ranking triangles. 
disgusting, honestly. This equilateral triangle is a Dorito with hair. That's that's also D tier. I'm sorry. It's D tier for Dorito. Disgusting. The lines represent e equal length, but they also represent hairs that are unwanted on my Dorito chip. After the most divisive and controversial triangle ranking of all time, I made a tier list of every Smash Ultimate character's favorite Mountain Dew flavor. Then I did a tier list of colors. Pokemon Gray version never happened, D tier. Literally every shiny from Gen 7 and Alola. A ranking of the Pokemon rivals. Mountain Dew flavors. All of Ash's Pokemon. The regional variant shinies. Fruit. Gold shinies. And Garfields. Thankfully I'll get to keep my channel for another year. Eventually, July rolled around, and I wanted to move on from trading out Execute, and I was a little bit stumped trying to think of what I should trade out next. Then I remembered I could transfer in Pokémon from Sword and Shield, and that there was a unique ribbon, the Curry Mark, that I could get from attracting wild Pokémon with Curry. It takes a while to make a lot of Pokémon appear this way, and many of the Pokémon you can find can't be transferred into Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but I've always wanted to shiny hunt something this way, so this was a good excuse to get some encounters in. On July 10th, I loaded up my two boxes of curry guys and got ready to trade them out. An actual end to the challenge was starting to be within sight, and I started displaying the Pokedex tracker on screen at all times, since so few Pokémon remained. And I was eager to get this done. So after doing one of the slowest ways to obtain Pokémon with curry, I wanted to do something lightning fast. I would catch a lot of unknown in Legends Arceus. And these would be cool enough trades because they'd appear in the neat little green strange balls when transferred into BDSP. Then, the next session, I decided I would become a master of cries. Not crying, guessing Pokemon cries. Now, guessing every cry was a skill that I used to take great pride in, back when there were only 251 Pokemon. I remember on long road trips, my sister was sitting in the back seat and I could tell exactly where she was in game what Pokémon she was using and what Pokémon she was fighting, just by listening to the audio. But in recent years, the skill has faded away, with more and more generations of Pokémon getting added, and the transition to Gen 6, where every single Pokémon's cry was revamped. Just listen to how they changed Salamence's cry. I wanted to improve myself, become stronger, get back to how powerful I was when I was 7, so I wonder traded, while guessing Pokemon cries trying to get the longest streak that I possibly could. Sunflora. And I didn't do so well. Volcanion, okay. I became so absorbed in trying to understand all the cries, that I didn't even realize how much of a push was being made to complete my Sinnoh regional decks. I got so lost in it that I kept doing this for an hour after stream ended. And then I started studying the cries in my free time, and streaming exclusively cry-guessing runs, until it reached the point a few days later when I could guess all of them in one sitting without having to give up on any. No, it's why not. And then I started speedrunning it. And I think I'm just gonna keep going with this sometime after I finish this video. Kyogre beckons. Even though we can't get Kyogre over Wonder Trade in this generation. So I was so busy guessing Pokemon Cries last stream that I didn't even realize the coolest thing that had happened. We now have enough Pokemon to complete the entire Sinnoh Dex through Wonder Trades only. For the most part. Because, of course, there are the legendary Pokemon that cannot be Wonder Traded. So I've got them in Pokemon Home ready to transfer over. These are actually my uh, Sinnoh legendaries from the Hisui region, from Legends Arceus. And let's go get that National Dex now, now that we can complete the Sinnoh Dex. Check it out. It's a complete Sinnoh Dex. Sort of. Because of fish. We'll get it eventually though, someone will trade a Goldeen eventually. We recorded all the Pokémon of Sinnoh in my Pokédex. So I got the National Dex in the Poké Radar with only two badges. Unfortunately, having the Poké Radar early isn't as cool as it sounds, though, because we don't have access to all the resources like the high-level repels that would actually help us chain. And we can't get the Poketch app that lets us keep track of our chains until we get Surf, which is much later on. 
Just to complete a shiny hunt on principle though, I did try and chain Sun Current with the limited resources that I had. Oh ho! Uh oh! <laughs> Look how dark that thing is! Sick. Someone's getting this shiny Sun Kern. Now knowing that I'd be better off radar chaining on my main file instead of the Wonder Trade file, I decided to go for a type of radar hunt that was not possible before these games. Going for a shiny patch at a chain of zero. Absol Swarm Day. I've been waiting for this. In these games in particular, at a chain of zero, each grass patch has the full odds 1 in 4096 chance of being shiny. And since you see four patches every time you reset the radar, the encounters are blazing fast. On a single game, I managed to go over odds on this hunt in just a few hours. And there's a little bit of an extra thrill hunting this way too, because you have no idea what the Pokémon is going to be within that shiny patch. We got info on Bayonetta 3 earlier, and there's a shiny patch! 5,392 encounters. Let's see what it is. Absol! Yeah! Shiny Absol. This Absol would be one that I would keep, but I continued the chain. And there's another shiny patch. This shiny Absol will be going out to someone in chat. And that broke the chain. On July 17th, I traded out the fruits of my Poké Radar journey. The Matt incident? Yo. Yeah. And my globe trotting journey slowly continued, working my way down the list, marking more points. Hold that thought. We got 80 more rare candies. <laughs> Look at that pile of swine. But truth be told, I still had Poké Radar fever, and I wanted to fulfill my dream of farming at least 10 shinies from one chain. So I set out to Route 201, where I would bird up. I had pretty tremendous chain luck, perhaps some of the best I've ever had. Dude, the next patch added shiny patch too, right after that one. Well, you know what they say. One day you'll catch the most shiny Starly you'll ever catch in one day in your entire life. And you may never even realize it. Except, I totally realized it. Because on top of the 14 shiny Starly from this chain, it was also Starly Community Day and Go. I'd be shocked if I ever caught more. Another perk of having the National Deck so early is being able to find a wider variety of Pokémon in the Underground, with many of them being below the level that they normally should be. And when I decided to Wonder Trade some of these out, I found the straw that would break the camel's back in the Pokémon Legality Checker in this game. My camera up that was fully legitimately caught did not pass the check and I was unable to trade it. I can't trade because there's a problem with my Pokémon. What? but every other underleveled Pokémon I had traded out just fine. It was only Camera Up that was the problem. Do a flip? For the rest of stream, I wondered why Camera Up was just broken of all Pokémon, and I knew I needed to investigate it further. There was pretty much nothing out of the ordinary about these Camera Up, and they even transferred into Pokémon Home just fine. And it turns out, thanks to research from Anubis, the game does not allow you to trade a Camera Up below level 30 which is such a strange and arbitrary thing. It makes me wonder how many other completely legal Pokémon are randomly blocked off from being wonder traded in this game. These camera ups were the only instance of this that I encountered personally over the course of this entire gauntlet though. Oh, 600 points! 90 whole rare candies. I think this one is sick. I think there's something wrong with it. It's July 26th, and every Wonder Trade stream I do now could potentially be the last. This is all that's left now, and I'm going to update my prediction of what I think the final Pokemon is to Pupitar. Who's got a Pupitar on hand? I'd love to be proven wrong by that. With the rest of this bottle of Baja.
and my box is loaded up with these Absol. Let's take on potentially the final Wonder Trade stream tonight. Friend Ball Pupitar. Okay, I stand corrected. I thought Pupitar would be the last one. All right, this is it. This is the final point. We're about to become... I'm about to become Mr. Worldwide. With this Meryl. Bloop. And with that, look at... Look, wait for the jingle. We did it! I've marked every point on the globe. And you get a full 100 rare candies. The pinnacle of power for a number of rare candies. And with that goal complete, Sunflora, Fortress, and Vigoroth were the final three Pokemon remaining in the national decks. Sunflora! Two left. But then, I ran out of Absol to trade for the night. Which would normally be the stopping point for the night for me, because if I ran out of Pokemon, surely everyone else did. But things were different with this final push for these last two Pokemon. Everyone seemed to be trying to prep a Fortress or a Vigoroth. So I kept hatching more Absol on stream, to return to the Wonder Trades for one final push. And it was a short push. It only took three trades for me to get the last two Pokemon. Fortress! That's it! After 1861 Wonder Trades, we've got them all. I'm gonna replace the Slugma trade with this Fortress trade, because I, I gotta keep the record of the Fortress trade, you know, as the final one. Though the globe was entirely filled out and I got this fancy golden plaque, and my national dex was totally filled out aside from legendaries and mythicals, my job was not yet done here. We had to decide which out of these 1800 Pokemon would be the six that would reach level 100 with the 600 rare candies that I had accumulated over the course of this. We had to decide the fateful team in a tournament of champions. I set up a double elimination tournament bracket where chat would vote on the winner of each match. Congratulations to Live Reaction the Slugma. And I grossly underestimated how long this would take with it being double elimination. After an honestly excruciating six hours of making chat type 1 and 2, these were the final six Pokémon that moved on to join the final team. The brave few that would reach the pinnacle of power, level 100. I could press a button to skip all this, but I kind of like the sound effect. It's like we're playing Pac-Man. That's the sound of getting souped. Get souped. Chicken! Thickagon Z, Big Guy, Burger King, and the beloved Chungus Jr. all reached level 100. And I'm going to do a victory lap of the rest of the playthrough with this team as a future video someday, but I haven't even started on that yet. For now, let's take a look back on some statistics. So Twitch chat user Drifting Quill surprised me one day with a big spreadsheet of all the wonder trades I had done so far. And after filling out the rest of it, I wanted to see what the top five most traded Pokemon were. Some of them were predictable, and others I would have never guessed in a million years. At number five, with 36 trades, we have a strange one. Kecleon. Almost all of these Kecleon also came from one person. AVK Prophet. And next for number four and three, we have a tie with 42 trades each. Bidoof, and Eevee. In second place, we have Starly. This is what I thought would be the most common Pokemon that I would receive over the course of this, and perhaps if I wasn't streaming, it would be. But that leads us to number one. Dunsparce. The Pokemon that I wouldn't initially receive until I had already done 1,000 trades. A lot of people happened to be hatching Dunsparce at the same time, and I just kept receiving them. As a Dunsparce fan, I'm just glad that it finally won something. I'm so proud of you, Dunsparce. I still did want to obtain those final legendaries that I was missing that couldn't be obtained over Wonder Trade. So, in order to do the most interactive way of getting them, I did Dynamax Adventures with the chat. Because at the end of the day, that's what this gauntlet is all about anyway. It's not about creating some sort of impossible challenge or 
getting the national decks for free because I can make my minions do my bidding for me. This was all about giving people a common goal to come together and just trade with each other. It's all about weaving a tapestry of trades and stories. Something that anyone with the game can become a part of. And now that I've done this twice in two different games, I'm gonna do it again. We've already got confirmation on the official website that Scarlet and Violet will have surprise trades, which are basically wonder trades under a different name. So maybe that's where you'll see me do this next. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this whole long crazy journey, and I will see you next time.